Welcome back. Stocks are trading higher this morning as we are looking ahead to a big week of earnings and economic data. Take a look. Dow Industrials right now at the highs of the morning with a gain of 330 points. That's 1.1 percent. The Nasdaq's also higher, 1.5 percent higher. Bank of America is reporting third quarter earnings this morning. Goldman Sachs is out tomorrow. Uh, Amerivet Securities head of U.S. rates, Gregory Farinello, joins me now to look ahead. And Greg, it's good to have you this morning. Thanks very much. What kind of a third quarter earnings season are you expecting? So, good morning, Maria. Thank, thank you for having me again. I think it, I, I think it's really less about what we're seeing right now. I think you know markets in general are much more focused on what lies ahead. You know, I think if you if you look at the bank earnings right now, somewhat mixed. Uh, we take away a little bit from from each bank that we've seen so far. You know, certainly with J.P. Morgan, Jamie Dimon, he's saying headwinds ahead. If you listen to Wells, they talk a little bit about the mortgage market. We know that market has moved considerably. And then if you listen to James Gorman with Morgan Stanley, he's talking a little bit about the employment market and the labor market moving forward. So we're, we're much more focused here on the economy, not just what we're seeing right now, but what, what's ahead as we wind down 2022 and we head into 2023. Yeah, I mean, that's what you're hearing from a number of uh, sort of important voices, from Larry Summers to Jamie Dimon, that we are anticipating a pretty severe recession in 23. Goldman Sachs, by the way, predicting a deeper recession for the U.K. in 2023 after the tax uh, U-turn. And now we've got breaking news this morning that Chancellor Jeremy Hunt says that they will no longer be proceeding with cuts to the dividend tax rates as the Bank of England ends its purchasing of U.K. government bonds, Greg. So we've got the, the U.K. story as well. Is this what you're expecting also from the macro story in the United States, that things are going to get tougher? That's why we're focused on the guidance from these uh, companies who report earnings this week. Sure. I mean, I, I think if you look at if you look at the economy in today's day and age, I mean, things really move very, very quickly. You know, we wrote to our clients a couple of weeks mm -hmm. ago how we thought this U.K. scenario was a shot was a shot across the bow in terms of the mark to market moves that we've seen, particularly on the interest rate side. And then conversely, what we see governmental agencies doing in terms of trying to alleviate the inflationary pressure. So I think what you see what, what happened in the U.K. in particular is, on one hand, you have the central bank that's saying we want to raise rates to slow down the inflationary dynamics, and they have some pretty severe inflationary dynamics there. And then on the other hand, you've got the fiscal authority saying that we want to loosen conditions. And, and it's really not all that dissimilar to what we're seeing here in the U.S. I mean, we continue to want to spend money on the fiscal side, and at the same time, the Fed is trying to raise rates here, and they're raising rates aggressively because they want to slow down inflation. And those two dynamics, I think, right now are conflicting. And I think what you're seeing in the U.K. now, in particular, the, the fiscal side of the equation is starting to throttle it back here. And the U.K. is going to back away from the bond purchases that they put in place, you know, not so long ago. And, and we've look, we've got liquidity issues here in the U.S. too. So we need to keep a watchful eye on, on this right now going forward. Yeah. Liz Peek, jump in. President Xi Jinping recommitted to zero COVID policy in his speech yesterday. Isn't that a pretty important factor also in terms of looking ahead to 2023? A absolutely. I mean, this is... This is a global dynamic right now. I think if you look at if you look at the global economy, I mean certainly there are pockets of the global economy that are clearly already in recession. You know, technically, you know, we had those factors here short term as well. I think the one thing that has kept us moving forward is our employment market, but certainly look, China is a very very big force in terms of global dynamics. I think what you're hearing out of China is extremely important and I think also, what you're hearing from, from the Fed short term, too, is they are starting to acknowledge some of the global forces out there, the potential spillover effects in terms of what the global dynamic means for the U.S. Now, they're not pulling back, I think, short term, but I do think that dialogue in terms of what they're seeing abroad, China included, obviously Europe, is, is going to be a bigger and bigger factor as we move into 2023.
Yeah, I mean, yields are coming down this morning. The 10 years down about nine basis points, and we're looking ahead to the Federal Reserve meeting uh, November 1st and 2nd. Uh, what do you expect? Uh, uh, market seems to be looking for another 75 basis point hike here. Greg, what's your take on the November meeting? Sure. So I think I think if you look at November, we're priced for 75. I think if you look at the dynamics between the employment number, last week's CPI number, I think 75, Maria, is probably baked in the cake for November. But then I think the market's looking to December and into 2023. So if you look at that terminal rate, the Fed's end game, and that's really where we've been pointing our clients to, if you look at that, we're pricing close to 5% now, which when you look at core inflation, seems pretty reasonable. So I think the Fed delivers another 75 in November. We're priced now for another 75 for December as well. I don't think it's a, that December meeting is not as clear to me. At some point, I think the Fed is going to, they're not going to stop, but I do think they will need to throttle it down a little bit. All right. We'll be watching that. Gregory, good to see you this morning. Thanks very much.